That's what. But the run out. Did you catch all that? Or do you need me to slow it down? Because this is one of the strangest balls you'll see in our sport. Jason Holder is the bowler. And he's coming around the wicket. A defensive option when you're getting hit by everyone. Then Holder, one of the most skillful players in all of cricket, delivers a filthy high full toss. It's a slow ball that he loses control of and it becomes a full banger. Holder was the second most economical bowler in this game. This is not a delivery that you would normally see from him. It was terrible and should have been smashed. The batter is Teja Nedamanaru, who has just scored the most important 100 of his life and is seeing the ball like a hot air balloon. But this one takes him by surprise, and what should be almost a free hit, and it is pretty much so high that it's almost a no ball, ends up with the most mangled attempt of a hoik ever, and instead of smashing it, he just sort of mushes it so badly that it lobs up safely to Holder for what should be one of the easiest chances he will ever receive in professional cricket. And Holder had taken this catch at slip earlier. He has fantastic hands. Yet, on this very, very simple take, he was a complete mess, and somehow he shelled the world's easiest catch. The non-striker is Sakib Zolfika. He bowled earlier in the game with a no front arm style action. I know they mentioned that because it's cool. But right now, he's the guy who continues to run, even though the ball is just slowly looping up straight back to the bowler. And then when Holder drops it, Sakib doesn't even turn around straight away. Not that it would matter, because at this stage, look at where he is. And then finally, after these three players have made, I don't know, four or five major mistakes between them, Jason Holder just turns around and knocks the stumps out to put the ball out of its misery. And that stump goes flying. This is an angry run out. This is one of the most action-packed, stupidly exciting pieces of cricket you will ever see. And what if I told you that in the match it was played, almost no one even mentions that this delivery existed. And that is because this stupid ball happened in one of the greatest 50 over matches of cricket ever played. This video is brought to you by Wicket Cricket Manager. This show was made by HCL Tech, a company that believes in partnerships so much you can read their name on the Australian shirt. This show leans in hard on data and technology, so we are proud to work with HCL Tech, leaders in their field. Logan Van Beek won player of the match for his performance. But look at these numbers. He made 28, albeit off 14 balls, and took one for 77. There were 200 scored in this game, and yet by the end of this video, it would be hard to argue that Van Beek was not the most important player. The game we are talking about is also known as the 18th match, Group A in Harare, for the 2023 ICC Cricket World Cup qualifier. And this wasn't a knockout game, it was actually the end of the group stages, where a win in this match would be carried forward, meaning that the points would actually help the team qualify rather than it being a direct knockout. Both the West Indies and Netherlands needed these points to get them in a position to qualify for the World Cup. And this match started absolutely normally. It was a very good pitch for batting on, and the West Indies scored well, but nothing particularly special. They get to 160 runs around the halfway mark of the innings, when Sakib Zalfika takes two quick wickets and put pressure back onto the West Indies. The Dutch also threw themselves around the field a lot, and I don't say this lightly, this fielding is violent. It's the most back-jolting boundary effort I have seen in a long time. The Netherlands were risking long-term spinal injuries to try and save a couple of runs. And also, this is one hell of a high kick. But at this point of the game, what really happened was Nicolas Puran came in. And it's interesting because looking back, he had a fantastic 2019 World Cup, especially for someone who really just hadn't played a lot of ODI cricket before that time. And this time he's batting with everything he has just to get his team into the tournament. And to be fair, he gave it a fair go. He was 7 off 17 balls at one stage, and he ended up with 163. His quick feet ruined the Dutch spinners, and every mistake they made seemed to leave Zimbabwe it was hit so far. And it wasn't just any knock either. This was the third quickest 100 in the history of one day for the West Indies. When he started, the Netherlands were still in the game. And by the end, this looked beyond them. The West Indies added 118 in the last 10 overs to turn what was a chaseable total into something completely different. The West Indies made 374. Netherlands had never scored over 350 in the second innings, or even over 300. Their highest chase was 291, and they only had nine scores of over 250 in the second innings. 
Also, weirdly, this was the most important match these teams had ever played. They'd only gone up against each other once in the 2011 World Cup. But that game wasn't particularly important, except for Kemar Roach's six-wicket haul. And maybe the most interesting link between these two was in 1996, when the legend Nolan Clark played for the Netherlands. This was a player who made his first-class debut for Barbados in 1969. So playing for the Netherlands in 1996 meant that at the age of 47 and 257 days, he would be the oldest player to ever be in a World Cup. And despite being on in years, he could certainly still play. And while he didn't make any runs in that tournament, he did knock around a few boundaries from South Africa's finest. But the current Netherlands team didn't need Clark for their start, because Max O'Dowd and Bikram Singh started incredibly well. They got 71 runs by the end of the 10th over, which was 10 more than what the West Indies had managed. They had a similar partnership after that, but they lost a couple more wickets there as well, which meant that at the 30 over mark, they'd lost four wickets, but also needed 196 runs with their top order gone. So it's like a T20 game where you need 10 runs and over, but you're starting with only six wickets in hand. That is a hell of a chase. And also, remember that the Dutch didn't really have a lot of support at the game. This wasn't a home match or a World Cup game. It's a qualifier in Zimbabwe. They were essentially playing in a vacuum. And stop me if you've heard this before, but Captain Scott Edwards saved them, playing his scoops and sweeps as he likes to do. Perhaps the more interesting innings was by Teja Nedimanuru, who made 100. And not any time, but the quickest in Netherlands history. But it was also a lot more than that. The Dutch hadn't made 100 in 50 over cricket since 2014. Well, that's not quite true, because Nedimanuru had actually made one a few weeks earlier. But the point is, it had been a long time without any hundreds, and suddenly he scored two. And the thing about him is, outside of those two hundreds, he really hasn't made any runs in the 50 over format at all. Even with them, he's still only averaging 26 in total. He passed 50 four times in his first 25 matches. And so for a middle order guy to ensure that two of them are hundreds is an incredible record. But also, that was it, because he has not made a run since. And for a while, it looked like he was going to do this on his own. But this partnership was so huge that it drags the Dutch back into the game and they score at nearly 10 RPO over 14 overs. So now the pressure is back on the West Indies, which culminates in the kind of catch you drop when you are under this kind of pressure. If his hands were any harder, he would have punched this ball into South Africa. But the Dutch do lose wickets, but in completely bizarre ways. Scott Edwards moving all over the crease only to pop the ball back up to the bowler. Not to mention our friend the drop and run out from the start of the game. And then this scoop that pops up over the keeper's head enough for short third to come and pick it up. That was the second wicket in that over, and it was Nita Monero. And now the Dutch needed 48 runs from 24 balls with only three wickets in hand. At the crease was Logan Van Beek and Arian Dutt. The off spinner was only 20 at that stage, and he only had 77 professional runs. Recently, he made 23 not out against South Africa, so there is clearly some batting talent there. But Van Beek was the senior player. He's a first class 100, but he averages in the low 20s. And in list A, he really hadn't done much with the bat ever. But he's a clever cricketer, and he makes 18 runs from two overs, meaning that the Dutch now need 30 from the final 12. And so they were still a distance back until Logan Van Beek goes crazy against Roston Chase's offspin, scoring 20 run runs off one over. That means they now need nine runs off the last over. Logan is still firing, and he smashes the ball through the offside for four. Next delivery, he knocks one into the covers and takes one. They need four from four when Dutt hits it straight up in the air and the West Indies ending his innings. Then the West Indies make a mistake, allowing Logan to steal a bye. The next ball, they manage to get another extra run when Van Beek called a two just to level the scores. Though, of course, in this game, nothing can be straightforward. So the umpires had to make sure that he had actually completed both the runs, which he did. At this point, it is the highest tie in List A cricket history. And if they win, it will be the second biggest chase in 50 overs history. They have already scored the second most by an associate against a full member. Oh, and it was also one of the highest overall totals in ODIs. So no matter what happens on this last ball, it is absolutely incredible. But sadly for the Netherlands, Van Beek can't get it away and he ends up being caught in the ring. And so this match goes to a super over. Now the Netherlands just ride the Van Beek wave. The player who was smashing the ball at the end was just sent out for the super over. So Logan Van Beek is going up against Jason Holder. Remember, this is someone who's paid lots of money to bowl at the death in the IPL. The first ball he tries around the wicket with this weird field setting, which allows Van Beek to get one away to the vacant mid-wicket boundary. 
Next ball, Holder tries a wide Yorker, but he ends up with a full toss that somehow Van Beek still hits to the leg side for a six. Holder tries a surprise short ball, and Van Beek muscles it away to the still vacant mid-wicket boundary. Holder switches to over the wicket and goes for a conventional Yorker, and he misses it enough to allow Van Beek to loft the half volley over the leg side for six again. Holder now tries a slower ball that drops on a length and is bashed over the leg side for another six. And then Holder will finish up with a slow ball bouncer that Van Beek still gets away, even though the West Indies now have two men on the leg side to stop it. Holder tried every single trick in his death bowling bag. Six different deliveries. Around the wicket Yorker, a wide Yorker, a surprise short ball, conventional Yorker, slow ball and slower bouncer. And the over went for 30 runs. Scott Edwards was the other player in the super over and all he had to do was walk out to the middle and then walk back. Van Beek went 4, 6, 4, 6, 6, 4 against Jason Holder. And as if he hadn't done enough, the Netherlands then sent him out to bowl. And remember, he'd got from 77 from his 10 overs, which I suppose in this game was about par. But even so, he had now bowled his full quota. He had batted twice and he was now asked to go out and defend 30, which I suppose is not the hardest thing in the world, but still. And then Johnson Charles hits him for six. The chase was on. But then there are two singles. And at this point, Logan Van Beek has already won this game. Oh, but that isn't good enough for him. So he dismisses Johnson Charles, and then he follows up by dismissing Romario Shepard. So when I showed you the player of the match details before, they were incomplete. Logan Van Beek took one for 77 and made 28 in the game. But with the super over, he was involved in every single ball, and he made 30 runs and took two for eight. And this was not the greatest match by a player ever. But Logan Van Beek gave us perhaps the greatest super over that anyone has ever performed it. And it's because of this madness and Logan's brilliance is why you see the Netherlands in the World Cup today.